I'm Mark Cohen. I work with Spirant, and um, and my in my talk, I'm going to give you a uh, a snapshot and a preview of what we're going to be announcing over this week about the new SD WAN certification program. So, as as Kevin had led off, certification is very critical to driving adoption, and I wanted to just explore why that's the case. And first of all, I wasn't particularly surprised with the heavy reading results that Kevin shared in his initial slides that indicated how critical and, and, and even how important certification is for many of the operators as well as uh, vendors and end users considering the increasingly dynamic market for SD-WAN. So if we take a, a step back, it's a market that did largely develop without any standardization at all until last summer the MEF decided to address that and we actually introduced MEF 70. And then in addition to that, it's a market that was pretty well established by the time we actually were able to, address, to, to actually begin the standardization process. It's a market that has the, literally dozens of vendors many service provider offerings. If you're an end user, think about all the trade-offs you have to think about, which is including which vendor am I going to use? What functionality do you provide? What's your security approach? How do I address policy? And then you have the, the other fundamental decision about whether you should take on this on your own or you should adopt managed services. So it's an incredibly complicated set of decision-making and this is what we're addressing with the new SD-WAN certification program. I mean, first of all, we just want to make sure that we can even have a dialogue on SD-WAN. I mean, if how many times as an end user or really wherever you sit in the overall ecosystem, have you had a discussion on SD-WAN and, and we're using the same terms, but they don't mean exactly the same things. So what we want to do is to drive some commonality. And we don't want to just drive it in a paper sense, but we want to, uh, I'm from Missouri, so it's about showing me. And showing me means that we have to test and validate the capabilities that we provide. And by doing that, we're able to simplify the discussion, whether it's internally or externally with vendors, partners, and so forth. And ultimately what it, a, a standard does and what a certification program does, because they do go hand in hand, is it opens the door for a multi-vendor environment that doesn't cost tens of millions of dollars to integrate completely custom SD-WAN islands that are typical of where, what the situation is within um, and the enterprise today, but also even more importantly for large managed service providers who are really struggling when customers come to them looking for different products, different capabilities, and, and really a different approach and different thinking. So what we did is we, uh, we actually began to work on the SD-WAN certification program earlier in the year before the standard was ratified, but when the standard was, was fairly stable. Uh, what we're going to announce tomorrow to the, to the world is that uh, Spiron has become the, uh, cre the uh, authorized certification test partner. Uh, working in conjunction with the MEF, not to mention the MEF community, all of those stakeholders are very key. Uh, we are actually going to verify conformance with the MEF SD-WAN standard. Well, well, maybe specifically the MEF emerging MEF 90 SD-WAN certification test requirement standard. Now this is in working draft form to date. There have been a number of contributors. Uh, one of my colleagues at Spiron is one of the co-editors, along with Larry Sandberg. I don't know if Larry's here, but Larry with MEF. And this is going to actually guide a lot of the, the actual implementation of SD-WAN in the MEF community. Because ultimately, when we start to think about a certification and we start having to validate these claims explicitly, as opposed to just making claims, we need to actually test against a very stable specification, which is what the MEF W90 specification actually is. Now, on the right-hand side of this, this slide, we show a, a diagram that sort of indicates what the test environment looks like. And we are going to be testing 
and certifying both products as well as SD-WAN managed services. So we actually have a version, a variation of the testing approach for each of those. The, uh, the products being somewhat simpler because we're gonna be certifying those in a lab, whereas the certification of the services, the managed services is actually going to be in the operator's environment on an actual, not only operational overlay network, the SD-WAN higher layer network, but also with operational underlay networks. So it gets to be somewhat of a complex com certification environment. Although the approach we're taking attempts to simplify that by creating a series of test scenarios that make it much more streamlined to validate the key functionality that's in the, uh, that's in the, the MEFW90, the Working Draft Certification Test Requirements, uh, Working Draft Standard. So this is just a list of some of the testing areas. We're gonna be addressing uh, basic routing capabilities uh, one, of the, uh, one of the debates that I, I think took place way back when was whether you had to be layer three to be SD-WAN. Uh, believe it or not, there's some vendors who claim you do not, but in the MEF community, we, we uh, have, have put that issue to bed for now. So we're gonna be validating routing capabilities. We also are gonna be routing, uh, we have a number of other areas, everything from application flows. An particularly important one is policies. And the MEF 70 standard defines six different policy areas of which three are required. And what we wanna do is to get to the point where we have a good understanding of those policies and how we can validate those and validate the combinations of those policies because they're not necessarily all independent. We also are going to uh, we're also going to certify addressing modes, IPv6 and IPv4 are both optional, but you need to support one of them. And that gives you an indication of some of the challenges when we're actually undergoing an upper layer or higher level certification. Now, the policy area in particular is, is, is interesting because there are some policies such as encryption, which I think that most in the room would probably agree are, is a good idea. But then there's other policies, things like whether or not we can support usage-based billing versus a, a, the, the more traditional fixed billing model. That one maybe we wouldn't see, at least maybe not in, in current services, as, as much of a demand for that type of policy option. So I suspect over time we're gonna see the need for all the policies that are defined, not to mention the many more features and capabilities, including policy ex extension, that's underway in the MEF or Applications Committee, the committee that's responsible for the SD-WAN standard, who is actually in the process of creating MEF 70.1, 70.1 being the first major revision to MEF SD, the MEF SD WAN standard. And, and I think this is gonna be going on in uh, re really as long as the standard continues to, to, um, to be adopted and to gain momentum in the marketplace. I mean, this is a, it's a very different type of model when we have software driven functionality it has implications up and down the organization and certainly for the certification activity as well. And that's why we've been, uh, we've been considering some interesting models for how we're gonna deliver certification more as a subscription service than just a snapshot certification, which may have made sense in, in, in past certifications for hardware-oriented functionality where the rate of change is a, is a lot slower. This is just to give you an indication of the, uh, the pilot certification workflow. Uh, Spiron is currently working with a, a series of uh, forward-looking vendors, as well as some managed service providers to actually validate the certification program. It was intended that because of the fact that we have a brand new standard, we have a new certification requirement specification, we have a test plan that's hundreds of pages. We have an implementation that maps to that test plan, that maps in turn to that certification requirement specification, that maps in turn to MEF 70. With so many moving parts, we needed to make sure that we were validating the actual certification. And we do this by actually going out and just exercising the certification, creating the pieces in parallel, 
and then iterating. So it's sort of an agile model, the software defined model for how certification, as Bob was indicating earlier. And the way the, the pilot's going to work is that we have an agreement that we're going to enter in with each of the certification participants. And that certification participant is then going to sit down and we're going to talk about their specific certification environment. If you're an SD-WAN vendor, it's pretty straightforward because you're going to be testing an aspirant lab. If you're a service provider, we're going to identify the sites. We're going to also sit down and talk about how we're actually connecting to the network, remote access, security considerations, not to mention who's going to support this actual certification, which will be performed remotely. And then once we have actually have a, a very solid understanding of exactly what we're going to do, then we're actually going to put the plan in motion, build the certification environment, and then we're going to be running certification test runs. And we hope to be able to minimize that number over time, but in the initial days, with a new standard, new set of requirements, new implementation, and so forth, we expect that there's going to, it's going to take a little while before we're able to certify. And, and then ultimately, we're going to hit the, the point everybody's been waiting for, which is when the certification run passes with 100% of the test cases uh, equal pass. And, and we're then going to coordinate with the MEF. We're going to convey that the certification has been successful. And then ultimately, MEF is going to issue a certificate that indicates the certification. And then, of course, they're going to publish that certification in the registry that was mentioned a bit earlier. So the idea, though, is to look at this process flow as an opportunity, an opportunity to really drive and build a sustainable full-scale certification program that's going to address the needs of our community for the long run. And we expect that after the certification program to channel the feedback directly into the MEF working draft certification test requirements so that we can finalize and ratify that as a standard. And then we're going to need to go back and recertify against the final standard. It's going to be it's going to be a relatively modest effort, or at least we expect that it will, unless there's major changes between the pilot and the, and the full-scale standard. And then we'll be able to, we'll be able to put this in, in, in motion on a global basis. So if we look at the status today, we, as I mentioned, we have the pilot underway. We're also working through uh, to, in, to compile a list of that feedback I mentioned a minute ago. We're also putting in place some internal processes so that we can actually scale on a broader level than we have been to date, where everything has been in motion and, and there's been a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes that none of you will see, hopefully, but that are actually going to ensure the robustness of the certification program over time. We're then going to ensure that all the documents are updated. This is a really key part. We want to be highly transparent in this process. We're in the, in the midst of um, expect, well, we expect and anticipate that there'll be some degree of change in these specifications. So we will be updating them in parallel. It's a little bit of an inconvenience to a certain extent. You'd like to have a waterfall process for documents. But on the other hand, we don't have the time and neither do you. So we're going to be driving this as quickly as we can.